We got a running back stash battle. It's between Jonathan Brooks and Jalen Wright. Who is the better fit for your fantasy team? I love both these stashes. They both got immense upside. It's going to be tough for me. Who's your favorite stash? Let us know in the comments below. But before we dig in today, you need to click that subscribe button right now. We're doing deep dives every day on the trending players, on the running back stashes, on the guys that were getting traded, on the guys climbing or moving down depth charts. We're doing that daily. On top of that, we're using these videos to help you set your lineups and win the waiver wire. Click that button right now. Stop missing out. Ric Flair's watching. You do not want to disappoint Ric Flair. But it's a battle today. We got Jalen Wright. We got Jonathan Brooks. Big news on Jonathan Brooks. We're elevated to the 53. Last week and a half or so ago, we thought he might be on the IR for the rest of the season. Carolina Panthers not looking good. Canales got asked that in the interview, and he kind of gave you like an ambiguous answer because he was speaking in probabilities, and the media ran with it. We covered that, but he's going to be elevated to the 53, and we're looking at Jalen Wright, and the reason why these two are running back stashes that can battle it out is he's got that speed, he's got that burst, and he can blast off a long game on any given touch. We're in the Dolphins offense, more lucrative than the Panthers. Devin Achen, Mostert, we know they've had their time with injuries over these last few years. All it takes is one of them to go down. Plus, these are rookies. And both these teams might be exploring their young running backs before they finish the season to see what they have for next year. But we're looking at Jalen Wright and Jonathan Brooks right now. Brooks, we have nothing right now when it comes to statistics. Got to lean on what we saw last year, the prospect profile, and what we're seeing on the tape. Jalen Wright, though. We're having some moments here. His yards per carry in some of these games, it's up there. 6.6 .6 in Week 7, 6.62 in Week 5, 8.5 in Week 3. And we're starting to get a little bit of work. We're efficient with the ball. And the thing about him, he's a pop gun running back. That if the lane's open... If he's getting the ball in the space in any way, off the screen, out in the flats, if he sees a hole, any way, he could house it. Whether it's on the 5, on the 50, he's gone. He's got that 4-3 speed. He's got top chip burst. That's the type of running back we're looking at. That's a running back you might be interested in. Jonathan Brooks has those capabilities. Maybe not to that degree. Definitely not to that degree because there's not many running backs that have that. But he's very good between the tackles. He's got good wiggle, catches the ball out of the backfield very well. Got drafted in the second round, even though he's coming off an ACL injury. One of the top running backs in college football last year. Jalen Wright was looking good in the SEC, and he got 1,000 yards rushing, four touchdowns last year, catching 22 balls. But he was electric, turning out production against top competition. 4.35 yards after contact per attempt. 82 yards was his longest run. 35 carries of 10 plus yards or more. He's electric. He can get that boom on any given touch. And that is a lottery ticket. That screams lottery ticket for fantasy football. You do not know what's going to happen with him. He's a very raw rusher. Like he's not a guy that you're going to expect to really hammer it out between the tackles. Find the lanes appropriately until he develops some more. However, with the ball in his hands... If things are open up for him, gets the ball in space, it's dangerous. We get him more in space more often. That means more touches, and that could be on the back end of the season or if an injury happens with Tua back there now. That could be dangerous, and that could be very helpful for your fantasy team. We're looking at Jonathan Brooks, one of the most productive running backs in last year's class. Would have been even more productive if it wasn't for the ACL injury. 63 missed tackles forced. 3.91 yards after contact per attempt. We're catching the ball out of the backfield, especially in that final season. We were looking good. We were looking solid. And we still get drafted in the second round. We're good between the tackles. We are electric in space. And this is a running back that could explode on us after he ramps up. And if he acclimates to the NFL game rapidly, then he could ramp up to be a tremendous fancy asset down the stretch. Chuba Hubbard's in this backfield. A lot of people are questioning that. We'll talk about that later. 
But again, we're seeing backfields with two running backs. And some of them are hitting with both those running backs like Detroit. And the talent here at the running back position for the Panthers is something a lot of teams don't have. So both running backs could be heavy hitters in fantasy football back into the season. That is something to look at. But we're looking at these guys as stash plays. And you're looking at a running back here that's got elite burst. He's got the speed. Hit over 20 miles per hour. College level. 3.91 yards after contact per attempt. 5.07 a year prior. 4.76 a year before that. We can force missed tackles. We can score from anywhere on the football field. Upside for days. Jalen Wright, 438 speed at 210 pounds. That is something you do not see at the NFL level too much. Top tier burst score. On the spreadsheets, he kind of compares to Miles Sanders. Production wise, we got that there. When you look at his scouting profile, some similarities. However, he's faster. He's a lot faster than Miles Sanders. He's got more shotgun to his run. He's got more explosiveness, more top tier speed. He's more dangerous with the ball in his hands due to that facet. A little bit raw as a runner like we've noted before. And that might prevent him from completely breaking out or becoming a top back. But players can get better. Players can get better. Players can learn. They can develop and become better players than what they were in college. Can't throw that out. And he's also getting opportunities right now as a rookie. With the other running backs there. He's getting touches. So that is an indicator. The team likes what they see. And they're allowing him to get some run. And if something happens to one of those starters then it's going to be a big deal. Brooks got drafted in the second round despite the ACL injury. We don't have a huge training camp. We don't have a lot of practice run in contact at the NFL level. So there's going to be timing phases with him, approaching the line of scrimmage, seeing the lanes. That could be a ramp up period, a developmental period for him this season while he learns the game. That could prevent him from seeing a lot of carries. The time missed from practices and all that stuff. But we're looking at these guys as stashes, which means lottery tickets. Who's got the most upside? What do you want? More floor, more upside. What do you want out of your lottery ticket? Because Jonathan Brooks, better at catching the ball in the backfield, probably will be used more in the passing game than Jalen Wright. And he's electric in space. Better between the tackles, better approach to the line of scrimmage, all the finer nuances from college, from what we've seen, looks better compared to Jalen Wright. But you're looking at these backfields, they're both muddled, they're both ugly because you got Chuba. Chuba's not going anywhere right now, he's just not. At best for Jonathan Brooks, they're splitting the backfield. At best, like if he goes off, Chuba's not going anywhere. That's not what we're going about. See that Miles Sanders dude right there? You see that guy? That guy's got to look over his shoulders. And I don't think anyone's going to argue about that. Jonathan Brooks, if he starts off semi-hot with a simmer, I'm not even going to say hot. Miles Sanders better be looking over his shoulder because Jonathan Brooks can steal his work in the passing game. There's few carries a game that he's getting. And he can be more electric. And with the work Miles Sanders is getting, and if he carves out a few more touches, that's enough to be fantasy relevant if you're explosive enough. You only need like 10 opportunities a game to be a volatile option for fantasy football. And when you're looking at like the fourth running back on your roster or something like that, you'll take that. You'll take that over some of the other running backs that are volatile as well because that young option that's explosive, that's being volatile, can all of a sudden turn into more because you got more room to growth. Same thing for Jalen Wright. Devin Achen, Raheem Mostert, the Dolphins are going to be moving the football more. They're going to be in the red zone more. And these two running backs get banged up a lot. Jalen Wright could see some run at the end of the season. They could say, screw it, we're going to give him a few extra series of carries a game. Once we get a few more weeks into the season, just see what they have in him. Just see what they want to do with his backfield. They might be thinking, hey, now that things are wrapping up, we might go HN and Wright next year. We may do that. We may have to do that, and we want to see what that looks like. Maybe they do that, and maybe that equates to fantasy production. Because remember, any given touch could be 
just a quick splash of 8 to 10 fantasy points, housing it for a touchdown. That's the player we're looking at here. Of these rookies, Jalen Wright's the only one that's been on the football field. But 42 carries, 208 yards, 5 yards per carry. And we're looking at 42 rushing attempts at 5 yards per carry. That's a good clip. He's Big Keaton Mitchell. He's Big Keaton Mitchell. That's what you're looking at right there. Big Keaton Mitchell. Keaton Mitchell is better at finding the running lanes. He's better at that, but he's smaller. So they're different running backs. They're not comparisons. But in fantasy production on how it could be scored, pop gun running backs with up and down production right now. That's what you're seeing here. Not many carries, but can still get you a lot of yards because we're getting a good clip on the yards per carry. That's what you're seeing there. Also, with the Panthers, Chuba Hubbard's not going anywhere. We're running at 5 yards per carry on 133 carries. That's not going anywhere. But you're looking at Miles Sanders. 3.7 yards per carry, 36 rushing attempts. Running at that awful clip, you're going to stay off the field. You're not going to get the touches. However, if Brooks can look remotely better than that, if even even, he's going to tap into that workload. And with that workload and adding more to that, if you're playing a little bit more efficient, you can have some fantasy results here. Jalen Wright, though, one target on the season. One target on the season. That caps his floor. So really, from what we're seeing from the numbers, he's going to be a boom-bust type of player. He's going to be boom or bust. You're either going to get this or you're going to get that until we get more work in the passing game. Jonathan Brooks forecast to be getting work in the passing game, running a lot of routes, getting targets, getting opportunities. What Miles Sanders is kind of doing that right now, Miles Sanders is running 11.6 routes per game, about 12 routes per game Miles Sanders is getting. So if Brooks gets that, he'll probably get more targets per route once he gets more acclimated, probably look good in space, and that's where you will get your fantasy production. He'll probably be getting about three to four targets a game, and those games where the Panthers are behind, which there'll be a good bit of those, he'll be getting targets there. And Chuba Hubbard's, it's all going to stay the same. It's all going to stay the same if it reduces, maybe by like 5%, where you won't even notice. But Brooks could house it on any given moment. Mainly, we're probably going to look at a scenario here, if Brooks does well, like a Gibbs and Monty, where they're just using both running backs, they're both doing good, you're starting both running backs, and it is what it is. But Brooks here is going to get work in the passing game because Miles Sanders is going to die on this roster. And Brooks is going to steal that 12 routes per game and maybe a little bit more because he's going to be more efficient with the ball in his hands. We're looking at what these running backs are doing in the passing game for the Dolphins. Devin Achan's getting all the work. He's getting all the work. He is their pass catching specialist. He's got that 4-3 speed. He does everything for them. He's getting a lot of work and a lot of opportunities. He's got a 61.7% route participation rate. He doesn't really leave the field. He's running 20 routes per game. That's what you want out of your running backs. That means good fantasy production. That means a good floor. Devin Achan is getting that good work. That good work. 5.3 targets per game. Jalen Wright's not going to get that with Devin Achan on the field. However, that could be an indicator that if Jalen Wright ramps up and develops rapidly, that could happen. But we're more talking about dynasty or that. And if something happens to Achan, Wright could be the guy seeing that, considering what he can do in space if other players are injured or if they're testing him out to see what they got out of Jalen Wright. And you're looking at the schedules, it doesn't really matter to me. It doesn't really matter to me at all. Because both these guys are stashes. Both these guys are home run threats. Both these guys are sharing the backfield. So it just matters if they get their opportunity. What that's going to look like. Part of this gamble is betting on injuries. Because that's what's really going to allow them to get the most opportunity. But when I look at the pure upside and what I want from these players. I think Jonathan Brooks is what I'm really shooting for. I think he can be more consistent. I think he can catch the ball on the backfield. I think we're going to get to a part of the season where they're going to look at Chuba and be like. I like what we're getting out of him for now. Let's scale him back a little bit and let's see what we're getting out of Jonathan Brooks so we can strategize for next year. Let's get him some experience so we're good to go for next year. Let's get him ready and we'll start getting him a few extra series. I look for Miles Sanders to be gone, to be non-existent. And I look for Brooks to start chipping away. I look for him to get a slow start and I want to gamble on that. What I like about Jalen Wright is the upside on any given play, and I want that on all my teams. But if I have to pick 
between the two. And I know a lot of you guys are going to agree with me. I like the upside of Jonathan Brooks. I think he has the potential to be a league winner. And I think he has that upside with him. Especially if something happens to Chuba Hubbard. More than likely, you're going to see him get sprinkled into the offense to start. And then ramp things up from there with more touches, more workload. And that might be okay for fantasy. More than likely, that's what's going to happen. And you'll get excited here and there. But it's going to be up and down. And some of you guys are going to hate it. And some of you guys are going to cry about it. But that's really the nature. But it's not what we're stashing him for. We're stashing him because of that potential upside. Because it's league winning. It's an a asset that could just drop a nuclear bomb on your league if he hits. That is something we could see here. Because if he had the Jalen Wright opportunity, healthy, he would be getting a lot more work than Jalen Wright. From what we saw out of college, the missed tackles, the highlights, go back and look at his tape. If you can't get his tape, go look at the highlights. Very good running back prospect. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button on the way out. One thank for watching. Catch you on the next video.